All right, w welcome to our web series. This is for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So today we'll be talking about radiation therapy. My name is Dr. Vivek Patel. I'm a board certified radiation oncologist at Holy Cross Health. So that being said, today we're gonna focus on radiation therapy for the treatment of breast cancer. When one is diagnosed with breast cancer, it's extremely important that one has a team in which they have various specialists. It's important that when one gets diagnosed to have a, a pathologist who, when looks at the tissue specimen, can decide the exact type of tumor, the exact grade of the tumor, and the exact size and um, different receptor positivity. At the same time, you want a radiologist to be able to look at the imaging, whether it's an ultrasound, mammogram, MRI, PET scan, CT scan, whatever it may be, and adequately assess the extent of the disease as well as if there's anything else that is involved, such as lymph nodes. Then you'd want to meet with a breast surgeon. A breast surgeon's job is to remove the disease from the body. There's various ways in which to do it. There's one type of surgery called a lumpectomy where they take out the disease plus a little bit of a margin. Second is a mastectomy where they take the entirety of the disease. You'd also want to meet with a medical oncologist. Medical oncologists give systemic therapy. Systemic therapy is any therapy that travels throughout the bloodstream. So that may be traditional chemotherapy, immunotherapy, hormonal therapy, et cetera. Then you'd also want to meet with a radiation oncologist and that's who I am and we'll talk about how radiation therapy is going to work. And at the same time, you'd want to meet with a geneticist to see if there's any genetic predisposition, a socialist, nutritionist, etc. And these are some of the services that we offer at Holy Cross Health when one is diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, going directly into and in focusing on radiation therapy, I wanted to talk about the process, the procedures, some misconceptions, side effects, as well as how technology plays an impact. Overall, when one gets diagnosed after they have the workup with the very specialist as we discussed, they'll usually have a surgery. Depending on the surgery and depending on the pathology, they may or may not need to have radiation therapy. If the decision's made that they need to have radiation therapy, we as radiation oncologists basically speak to the surgeons about the surgery, look at the pathology report, and look at the imaging to, to decide what type of treatment it will give. More often, we use what's called external beam radiation therapy. This is where a person comes in after they've had surgery, four to six weeks thereafter, and they receive treatment for as little as three weeks to as long as six weeks. The first step in deciding and the evaluation is to get a CT simulation scan. That's the scan that's done in which we plan the radiation. During that scan, we watch a person's breathing. We want to optimize their breathing to see would they benefit from having their breath held during treatment? Are they okay having it free breathing? Is it more optimal to put them in the supine position, which means on their back, or on the prone position, which means on their belly? The purpose of the CT simulation is to help immobilize a patient, so that way we can find out what is the best way to position them so we can maximize radiation to the area of the breast or to the chest wall or to the lymph nodes and minimize dose to the organs at risk, which may be the heart, the lungs, the esophagus, the spinal cord, etc. Once we determine what's the best position, we basically do a CT scan. That scan is done in the Department of Radiation Oncology. That scan is then used to plan. So treatment planning takes a few business days. That's where myself and my colleagues go through the anatomy of a patient. We decide what are the areas at risk and what are the organs that we need to protect. We work very closely with physicists and dosimetrists. Radiation oncology in general is a team effort. The physician uh, in a sense composes the, the orchestra, but every element of the orchestra, our, our therapist, our nursing staff, our front desk staff, our physicists, dosimetrists, and, uh, and everyone else plays a very, very crucial role in making sure that there's complete harmony. So once the plan is approved, the radiation begins. Again, it's given for three weeks to six weeks in total length. Treatment every day ranges from 15 to 20 minutes. There's a lot of misconceptions about radiation, Again, you don't see radiation, you don't feel it, it's not hot to the touch, and you're not radioactive. You can essentially live your normal life during radiation therapy. Again, we, we ask that you stay within your, your normal limits, you can work out during radiation therapy, you can even go outside and enjoy the, the warm weather we have in Florida, go swimming, go to the beach, etc. Again, we would just ask that we protect the area where you're receiving radiation from direct sun exposure, as that can lead to further side effects. So this is a good segue into the side effects. So overall, the side effects mostly affect the skin. The side effects are really dependent in radiation therapy depending on the exact areas that we're treating. So for breast cancer, 
it tends to be just the area of the breast or the chest wall. Sometimes you might even include the lymph node basins. The lymph node basins can be in the axilla, which is the underarm area. They can be in the internal mammary region, which is right here in the center of the chest. They can also be in the supraclavicular region, which is right here, which is right next to this above the bone called the clavicle. So depending on the area that we're treating, the side effects are usually limited to those areas. You can overall feel a bit tired, but other than that, the side effects would be in that general field. So again, the side effects can be fatigue. You can have skin changes, specifically in the regions that I described. You can have some redness, we call that erythema, some tanning, that's called hyperpigmentation. You can also have desquamation, which means you get a sunburn. Usually the only time one would have pain with radiation is should you develop a sunburn. The risk overall is relatively low, and if that were to occur, you'd get different medicated creams to prevent infection and things such as that. There's a very low risk of radiation causing damage to the heart as well as the lung. And there's a very low risk of radiation causing swelling in the arm, that's called lymphedema. Again, it really depends on the type of disease one has and the areas that one is going to receive radiation therapy. So overall, those are the major sort of side effects. There are many minor side effects and unlikely side effects as well. Now, the other things that I wanted to talk about was the types of radiation therapy that are offered, future directions, as well as what has changed recently. So the most important thing when delivering radiation therapy is to find out about the equipment that a facility has. It's a crucial that you're able to go to a facility where they can look at the breathing patterns, if one is able to do breath hold, free breathing, and optical scanning and that sort of um, possibility. And the other is to figure out if they're able to offer hypofractionation, which means to deliver a higher dose of radiation every single day, but to save you some time. So for example, historically radiation therapy used to take five to six weeks. Now we're able to do it most patients in three to four. Now there's future studies that are also looking at trying to, to accelerate that even further with just five treatments to 10 treatments. But again, the data is still pending. So today we focus mostly on external beam radiation therapy, which is the most commonly used radiation therapy for the treatment of, of breast cancer. I'll be happy to answer any other questions that anyone were to have. Um, so I'm here for you guys. So do you have some new equipment in the cancer center that can help with radiation treatment? Absolutely, great question. We do have new equipment in the cancer center. We have a very true beam that was recently installed, which has all the upgrades in order to do stereotactic radiosurgery, stereotactic body radiotherapy, as well as uh, intensity modulated radiotherapy, which we sometimes use for breast cancer, as well as 3D conformal therapy, which we commonly use. And the machine has the optical scanners and the cameras in order for us to do free breathing, breath hold, et cetera. We also have a large bore machine, so it allows us to do patient positioning in the prone position as well as in the supine that we had also spoken about. And then are there ways to minimize the radiation dosage to the lungs? Absolutely. So one of the ways in which we're able to do this, again, is patient positioning, either on their, their belly, that's called the prone position, or on their back, the supine position, as well as the machine can monitor the breathing. So that way we can take a scan of a patient when their lungs are full, as well as when the lungs are empty, and throughout this breathing cycle to optimize minimizing dose to not only the lung, but also to the heart. So when a patient is considering where to get their radiation therapy, why choose Holy Cross Health? That's a great question. Holy Cross Health is, in my opinion, one of the best places to receive radiation therapy as well as receive overall treatment for breast cancer, given that we have a multidisciplinary clinic as well as a multidisciplinary tumor board. So what I was alluding to previously is if one were to have a diagnosis, they would come in and they would meet not only the radiation oncologist such as myself and my partner, but also the breast surgeon, the medical oncology team, the social worker, the nutritionist, and the genetic counselor all on the same day. Thereafter, we as the, the treatment team would sit down and discuss the cases together. We would review the imaging with radiology. We would review the pathology together and we'd come up with a good treatment plan that is cohesive and based on the NCCN guidelines, which is the National Comprehensive Cancer Network guidelines. Thereafter, should the treatment decision be made that one needs to have surgery, systemic therapy, or radiation therapy, everything gets completed in a streamlined and organized manner, all in one area. So as opposed to multiple appointments with uh, possibility for a lapse in communication, everything gets done uh, directly, which I think is ideal for the patient experience, and we received excellent feedback on that. 
And then in regards to the radiation specifically, we have one of the most impressive pieces of technology um, in, the, in the South Florida area. And at the same time, we're able to provide the highest level of care given that piece of equipment and given our team and our experience with this disease. Okay. So are there any key takeaways that you'd like to leave with the audience for Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Absolutely. I think it's crucial that everyone go through their screening. And if there's any problems, any masses, lesions, anything felt like that, don't put it off. Go to your primary care doctors, go to your OBGYN specialist and, and get the care that you need. Early detection is the key to the highest rates of success. So better safe than sorry. And I can't stress that enough. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Thank you.